Hey everybody, Sibling Vaughn here. And in today, instead of doing a review of a book that I've crowdfunded and has arrived and then doing a review on it, I'm doing a different review. Today I'm doing a review that I got at my local comic book store. And that book that I'm going to be reviewing, and I'm really going to do a full review, um, just doing some highlights of this book, is Top 10. Okay? Um, with all the talk going on in today about diversity and uh, uh, representation uh, in our books, um, this is a perfect example of creating a world and filling it with a diverse amount of characters. Uh, it investigates and in my opinion successfully addresses uh, for a fictional world, uh, it has uh, male gay characters and it has a female lesbian characters in it. It even has incest in it, which uh, I don't think was pulled off quite well in my opinion. Where it also interests and has bestiality in it, which I thought they did a good job of pulling off. So we're going to do a short review of this book and I'm going to be highlighting uh, different pages to show you before I go any further. You can see that there's a lot of bookmarks in here. Okay, So a quick shout out and thank you has to go out to uh, those guys on uh, 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 Jeremy Lord Crackhead's channel on Saturday nights which includes Snuggy Jr. and Aldous on the farm and the others and those that I've missed I apologize. Uh, but uh, obviously, gentlemen can see that I was a uh, definitely a bookmark backer, and I used every single bookmark that you guys provided me. So, thank you very much, gentlemen. Your contribute or my contribution to get this tier, you can see, is being well used. So, thank you very much. Now, real quick about this book, okay? As you can see, it's a very thick book. Um, this book is done, and or I should say published, in publication history, okay? Not in chronological order in which these events would have occurred, okay? So when you're reading this, you'll be like, wait a second, why are we going back in time? What, what, wait, wait, it, it, chronologically this book does not work out, but they were printed in order of publication. So that's the first thing you need to be aware of when you're reading this uh, because the it's got a first 12 issues is Alan Moore, uh, Gene Ha, Xander Cannon and with the letters by the great Todd Klein. The second is a from a short story uh, from an ABC uh, uh, supersize issue we then go into the 49ers graphic novel. After that, we go into uh, the five-issue series illustrated by uh, Jerry Ordway. And lastly, we have a new, we have, we have a five-issue series. I believe it's written by Xander Cannon, and it is illustrated by Gene Ha. Uh, I will tell you truthfully, I think that the last story uh, if you're going to read this, you should definitely read that story before you read the story by Jerry Ordway. Uh, two reasons. Uh, I think that uh, uh, just chronologically, you, you, get a, you get a fuller sense of what's going on with it. Two, um, I didn't personally care for the art direction in the last miniseries, which may contribute to it being the final story whereas Jerry Ordway's leads leaves you on a great positive note craving more okay so I'm gonna hit the pause I'm gonna redirect the camera and then we will be uh, showing you I'll be certainly showing you certain pages from this book uh, the reason why I'm wearing my Mad Hatter hat is uh, I truly believe that this book could have driven Gene crazy.
crazy. And you'll understand once I start showing you some of these pages. Because boy, oh boy. If you had to deal with this script and get this script onto paper, it would have driven you mad as a hat or two. Okay, how's that look, everybody? We got a good shot in there? Okay, I think so. Okay, so top 10, the compendium. And we go straight to... I'm going to read you one paragraph from this Powers of Arrest. Okay? This is talking about the city, Neopolis, or Neopolis. Built shortly after World War II, Neapolis was first conceived as an attempt to circumvent the social problems served or posed by an alarmingly expanded population of science heroes, heroines, and villains that has seemingly ballooned into existence during the preceding decade preceding existence during the preceding decade. Former New Deal patriot vigilante Johnny John Q. Public Genovese, who became the first appointed mayor of the new city back in 1949, explained the problem. So, that right there, I think, really helps give you an idea of why Neopolis, uh, uh, Neop Neopolis came into existence. Yes, I might be mispronouncing that. So, very first shot. I wanted to show you guys was of the city itself. Okay. You take a look at this city. Hold on here. Hold on. Okay. That's much better. Had to readjust the camera so you guys could see more. So this is the introduction. Okay. You can see how it has a very steampunk, punk, futuristic feel to it. Uh, gives you a great sense of how you have this new, modern, expansive, technological marvel built within and on the past. So, and of course we have the very beginning starting with our character, or one of our, our introductory character. This is the character who is used essentially as a vessel that we are being introduced to this city through this character. So we get to experience what she's going through ourselves as if we were sitting by her side, uh, venturing into this city and her first day on the job of the police force. And there we have where she's being introduced to the new characters. Uh, and we, we do discover, uh, like I said, uh, we have uh, uh, a gay character. We have a lesbian character, and we have our dog character, who we'll be have addressing uh, the bestiality, okay? And then, of course, we go into all of the uh, characters of the police force, okay? Um, what's also nice is that there is an overall arcing story in this 12-issue series, uh, but basically each case that these guys work on takes about two issues to wrap up and before the uh the, the the case is wrapped up he will bring in a new case for them to work on so there's overlapping cases just like a regular police precinct but we have different officers working each case and because this is a superhero city we of course need to have a superhero police force so and we are then introduced to uh, Toy Box's uh, partner, that being Smax. Smax became uh, a uh, popular character within the fan base. Uh, Alan Moore is very good at introducing and getting us to uh, embrace uh, new characters, which that's the key thing here, is that while... There's a lot of things that are borrowed or lifted from uh, uh, pop culture and TV and movie and comic books. Alan is creating his own world that are housed by their own characters. 
Okay, so now he gets you into the care into it, and then of course I'm going deep into into it. Roger, stop scratching. My apologies. The cat is uh, wanting to scratch. So I wanted to sh give you this as an example. Okay, it this panel right here. Okay, and you can see that there's a lot going on here. Okay, you really, honestly, you need to really look carefully to see that these are uh, ripoffs, if you will, of various TV shows and movies. Uh, you can see right here, uh, this is a version of uh, Annie and her dog. We have a cheetah, classic uh, cheetah right here and we have other characters right in here and then of course one thing also throughout this book is when he's drawing a cityscape or a, uh, look at the billboards um they have various inside jokes also um including the the uh the um graffiti on the walls at one point as they're driving it shoes somebody spray painted on the side of the wall ask me about my man thing and then provides a phone number um, this here is the prostitute who will be significant by the end of the story so it's important to point her out but then this is also where she's being where she's been introduced early in the story okay so we're getting to know and learn about her. This is, again, we get into, we've established, this is the prostitute. This is uh, Officer or Sergeant uh, uh, Kemlo Caesar, okay? And by the end of the story, okay, uh, these two do have a sexual relationship. The thing is, is you take a look, okay? We're just now getting these characters where you get the sense that something beyond him performing his officer duties to protect her are now coming into play, okay? This panel right here, I think, is significant, okay? Because you have them walking along, and just their body posture alone, okay, there's that, that there's some type of awkwardness between them. There's some, there's tension between them. You take a look how, like, just her body posturing, his body posture, there's an awkwardness, okay? It comes down to there's things that they want to discuss, but they're afraid to discuss it with each other, Okay? And, okay. Now, up until this point, remember I said how like they're doing like rip-offs of various characters. Uh, yeah, they're doing rip-offs, but they're not hiding it well at this point. Okay, this panel here. Okay. And there's a lot of panels like this, even before this one, but this one's very obvious, so I wanted you guys to see this. Okay. Uh, you have where he's basically, this could be, classic angel from the x-men this could be uh uh american eagle from the uh, S uh squadron supreme we have uh man bat uh dawn star from legion of superheroes mr mind from shazam uh it goes on and on falcon from uh, marvel comics it goes on and on every single time gene is given the opportunity to do this he basically just can go wild with his own version or interpretation of what that character would look like. It's still, it's it's been changed just enough that he can get away with them saying, well, it's not that character. It might look like him, but no, it's this character. And if they had to pull up a name, they go, but this is also kind of, gotta keep in mind, this is also prior to Marvel being owned by Disney. And really this is prior to DC having the weight and the foot of 
Warner Brothers on their neck. Okay, I don't see this type of book being able to be done in today's market without one of those companies or the other companies threatening, threatening to sue the bejesus out of the independent person uh, or like you have to get or paying them royalties to the point where you're not going to make any money. Okay, because um, you got to keep in mind when this book came out it was prior to uh, DC Comics publishing Alan Moore's ABC Comics. Um, I personally don't know what the specific story is to why uh, DC Comics uh, started to uh, acquired and started publishing uh, 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 ABC Alan Moore's comics. Okay, so we have. And of course, we have. You just look here, okay. Uh, again, more of these visual hues and jokes, okay. Businessmen, you'll believe a man can fly. <laughs> and then, I mean, just never-ending story. Uh, Aurora and North Star from Alpha Flight. I mean, it just keeps going on and on with all the different types, okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's do it. Oh, you guys don't see it. Okay. Barbara Gordon, Charles Xavier, and uh, Dr. Callis from Doom Patrol. And they're basically <laughs> protesting for the rights for all access because they're all in wheelchairs. I mean, that is the type of joke that you put in the background that that really, that's either, either Gene really was able to go wild with this or he got a lot of direction from Alan Moore to include that in the background. And because for I've, the way I've understood it and I would have to really do some research on this to confirm it. From what I understand, Alan Moore has been very, he provides more than enough information for each panel. I've heard that uh, a story breakdown like this uh, just for a panel like this, he would write an entire paragraph of information and the artists would just have to be able to try to get as much information as they could without overloading the panel and just maybe get one or two things in of what Alan had written. So, um, like I said, I don't know that for certain. I'd have to do research on it, okay? But then here's where we get into it again, where... You get into the uh, it, this is it's Grand Central Station of Infinite Earths, and you got the ticket desk or information desk with all the different arrows, just like if you're a train station for which track you want to go to. Okay, you have all the different characters. Uh, <clears throat> this is like like a mm, this is about five years removed from Age of Apocalypse, so they've got the Age of Apocalypse characters here. But then we also jump back in time with the uh, pop culture references of uh, Star Trek Mirror Universe, Crime Syndicate, and of course one of my favorite panels. Okay, um, When I got this book, I sent Kay Manifesto uh, this image, okay, just to give him an idea of the pop culture references as Easter eggs in the background that really make you... The reason why you go, once you're done reading this book, you go back and you read it again, or you just go back and start studying the artwork to find all those inside jokes and everything that you missed. Because this here, okay, it you would look at it and like, it's just, oh, it's just people in the crowd for these characters to show that it's a busy, that's a busy uh, 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 train station to, to parallel universes. No, we've got Lost in Space. We've got Stargate SG-1. We have Voyager. Remember Voyagers where they had the guy and the kid and they flew through time with that magical amulet? Then they had to go and they had to fix time. Right there they are. And then this one here, okay, now, I might be going out on a limb with this one, okay? But Doctor Who, the very first season of Doctor Who with the very first Doctor, I think those are the, the Aztecs that he, that he interacts with. Remember those Aztec Indians and they speak with a, Shake, with a Shakespearean flair? Right there they are. I think that's who they are. So, but 
So that's that the right there, that panel alone really truly for me embraces uh putting your own spin on I need a crowded uh, a crowded uh, train a train station okay I need that sense of it being busy with a diverse amount of characters that sums it up completely in my opinion and then of course here uh, another reason why I, I found this book to be so good is uh, we have Kirby Kirby gets into this book with his take on uh, Galactus and Eternity. That Galactus, of course, is a cat character. And, oh, oh, geez. Oh, isn't, doesn't that look like that, that, that pesky little mouse down in Florida? I think it does. I think it does. Was my imitation of Mickey Mouse enough to get this, uh, to get this, uh, chant, this, uh, this, uh, video strick, stricken by Disney? We'll find out. And then, of course, uh, the next page here, I like the, the Beverly Hillbillies as the forever people. <laughs> and, of course, we have all, again, most exciting picks of all space-time, peep show, memory, amazing adult fantasy gifts, tools of suspense, iron rod, I can't, from here I can't read, I, I got, with the camera in the way I can't. And then of course, here's where I talk about it, okay. This is, we have Kemlo and the prostitute are making out, okay. And by the end of this issue, we're only about maybe like two issues away from the story being completed. We establish that they are going to have a relationship and it is going to be sexual. But again, we've gone through this journey. We're, this is a 12-issue series. We get the tissue 10 before we make it absolutely clear what's going on between these two characters. And when it happens, okay, we're not like, ooh, okay, we're supportive of, this, of, of Kemlo's choice. And what he's doing. Okay. I think about my friend. And her brother. Who. He is currently transitioning. Into a female. And. I've known him. Five years. Okay. I like him. I hang, I, I hang out with him. Without my friend's friend being around, okay? He is my own friend. He is my own friend without my friend being present, okay? I'm supportive of what my friend is going through. My friend has decided that he wants to go through the process and become a she. That is not going to affect my relationship with him, okay? I'm not going to look upon my friend in a demeaning manner because he is going to have feel more fuller as an individual as a she okay i was clear to him and i said i'm supportive of what you're going through you have a very masculine name and you now want a very feminine name i have no problem i hope you'll forgive me if i don't if I slip up and I call you by your masculine name uh, until I get accustomed to, to saying your feminine name, no problem whatsoever. He did say, you have, if you're going to do this, you can't just go through the hormone therapy to change your voice. You can't just go through the hormone therapy uh, so it reduces your, hair, your facial hair follicles and having breasts added. And then going through cosmetic surgery to have breasts added. Okay, you will not be a woman, and you cannot identify as a woman until you have your genitals removed. My friend did not have a problem with me saying that to them, because they know that I'm still going to support them. Okay, and that is the point of this panel right here. In bestiality, in today's society, 
Yes, I can. It's very easy to say, oh my God, that is sick. That is gross. Okay. In a science fictional story, a fictional story, we're going through this journey. We've gotten to know this character. Now we're experiencing bestiality and we're not grossed out about it. Okay. We are supportive of what that person's going through. That is real diversity writing. It's not what we have in comic books. It is not. This is how you do it. And these people that are doing it, like T. Franklin and Tom Taylor, they don't know a fucking thing about how to tell a good story with that being a result and getting the result that I just told you about. This is where, ta where I feel that Alan Moore didn't do a good job. Alan Moore tells a story of how the one character smacks, how he has to go to his parallel dimension where he grew up and he comes back with his sister. It's a parallel world. It's, a, uh, it's in one of the infinite par parallel existences. And in that existence, boys and girls, or I should say brothers and sisters, it is commonplace for them to uh, form sexual relationships and to get married and and. That is normal in there, in that, uh, or in that world. Me personally, I do have a problem with that. I no brothers and sisters should not be having sex. Okay, I he I I respect key word. I respect Alan Moore's approach in trying to present that information. I don't think it was successfully done. And I don't, and I do not agree with him having this. And this is completely different from the Kemlo story. This is a brother and a sister. They have genetically, it is not feasible in the long run for anybody to be doing that. More importantly, I'm sorry, that gets into. That, in my opinion, brother and sisters having sex gets into pedophilia for me. And I'm not going to leave it at that. 49ers. I love this shot because it shows this is the origin of Neopolis. We go into and we see how in the first page, we sh what I showed you, it was just this shot here of the city. Here, he's pulled back. But it's still the exact same shot. And we can see the crossing the bridge from regular uh, from the regular country over into Neopolis. And like I said, how we got one panel. Now we have two panels showing it being built before it was finished, when it was just being started. Colorscape also remember when I was taught when we were talking about uh, Earth One Superman uh, by Shane Davis. If you look at the color schemes of this book, okay, you will get a great sense of that of how this color scheme matches the scheme for uh, the book that Shane did. Uh, this is where we have Steve Trainer. Trainer, uh, we discover, we will learn and discover that he is uh, homosexual in this story and how he came about to be that. We have a nice, beautiful shot, still giving you the Easter eggs or inside jokes of uh, retro with the uh, Rocketeer as a radio. We go to, this is personally my, one of my favorites is Jerry Ordway, did a five issue series for top 10. Again, I have, I have, I don't have every single issue signed by him, but I have probably three to four of those issues signed. Uh, I didn't have him sign all in order. It's like, I like this issue, and I like this issue. So that's how I had him sign them, as to which issues I liked over others. And you read this, okay, with these characters, okay, you get the sense that uh, things are dire with them, and uh, it's, it's they're in a life-and-death situation. 
Nope, nope, nope. They are just at the park for their annual summer picnic. And you can see on um, pretty much every single character from the 12 issue series, along with some inside jokes such as uh, Tom Strong right there. Uh, remember Tom Strong was another one of, of uh, Alan Moore's books in his ABC line. And so we have an introduction of other characters also. Along with, again, we have those verbal, we have those visual jokes such as we have Lockjaw from Marvel Comics uh, and uh, obviously uh, likes the hot dogs or brats that they have available. And of course, <laughs> oh, splat! Oh, I love it. I love I I, lo I love those type of of uh, stories that with this type of stuff you have. It, it makes it interesting when you have. I mean, think about it. I mean, we 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 joke and we make fun of like T. Franklin, Tom's and Tom Taylor, and those and all those writers like that, and how they've got page after page after page of them just sitting there talking okay first of all we only have a page so we don't have to worry about it. but even in this one page okay you take a look how they quickly are changing the angles okay to keep you entertained you have these visuals to keep you entertained so you can move on to the next to the next page and so on okay so and of course uh, you look here Jerry Ordway was also given his ability to uh, get in on the humor Alan Moore did not draw this did not write this five issue series but Jerry Ordway in how he does so many pages like this gives you that sense as if the standard that Alan started with his 12 issue series is being honored and carried through even though he isn't actually the scribe for it and then of course we have this page here again I want to show this to you <clears throat> you can see how we have in the background or on the trolley okay radio flyer <laughs> anybody remembers that remembers those as kids and we have manhunter with his dog rex so and then of course the reason why i wanted to use is remember granny goodness well kemlo and his girlfriend have gone to uh to adopt a child okay and who's the receptionist? <laughs> Granny goodness. And of course, we you look here, you can see like Archie as a little kid. You have, oh God, oh, I can't remember her name. That was Sluggo. Um, again, oh, baby Huey. I, see, see, this is why I like books like this and stories like this where the artist has the freedom to just cram it full as many inside jokes as they want because it's it the books like these are going to be read and reread and reread and reread time and time again because of stuff like this and we don't art i'm sorry when i look at what artists are doing I'm personally insulted because you're never going to get stories like this with art like this, with inside jokes like this, because these artists, I can't even call them artists because A, construction-wise, like, when was the last time you saw a down shot like that? Unless it's a well-established artist, you're not going to see that anymore. And you don't see that. Okay? I'm, I'm going to leave it like that. But, of course, we have Granny Goodness. And, of course, you take a look. 
how they did the the uh i guess you could say the the uh the case worker she almost looks like fairy godmother and here what it was she talks about how uh there is a uh Oh, what she seems like we found several. Uh, oh, here, there, her, this, this, this character, this little girl here, who's a dog god, she lost them overseas in a terrorist bombing. She's been with us five years now, just a wonderful child, but, a, but for some reason, we found her hard to, we found a hard, we, we found her hard to place. Perfect child for Calvo and his girl and his girlfriend or wife at this point. I don't know. But again, I just again it's bestiality. But because they've invested so much quality time into it, you support it. And you, the reader, are happy for them that they are now have a family. And again, family, a father, a mother, and their child, for those two to raise and for those two to provide that child with their core values for them to be love and to be proud of with her accomplishments. Not really much of a story you get for these that you get these days, do you? Probably because those people who are writing, they don't have kids. And they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they find that having children's beneath them. And it's funny how so many writers and so many artists, how when they're parents, they are m much more prideful and much more aware of the actions they take because they're not just influencing, they're not just influencing themselves, they're influencing someone else. So they look at it and go, am I being a good influence on this person? And if not, what do I need to do to be a good influence on this person? And of course we have the end, we end that story. And like I said, we end the story on such a high note of another uh, f uh, family. Oh, we have the Labor Day. And so the summer picnic, we have this Labor Day pick up picnic. And of course, I love this badge bunnies, local 12. <laughs> I just, with, you take a look. If, if you say this here with her, with her, let's take off on little Abner. So... I think definitely the, uh, the next time I talk to Jerry, uh, I'll have to have, ask him to uh, go more in depth with his experience doing top 10. Same thing with uh, Gene. So uh, I don't really have, like I said, I don't really have anything to go over with this one. Story-wise was okay. Um, I just, they didn't include uh, many uh, of those vigil visual jokes and Easter eggs. So it wasn't as great and it could be the reason why uh, it was the last one. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of lengthy, but if anything, the length of this video illustrates the passion, love, and respect I have for this book. And it's definitely one of those books I would encourage any lover of comic books and any lover of the medium to watch or to, to read. Okay? It's very well written. Stories are very good and has a high level quality of artwork from Gene Ha and from Jerry Ordway. And if you have the opportunity to see them at a comic convention and you've read this book, make sure they know how much you appreciate the work they put into it. Uh, I'm sure you probably will get at least uh, some eye rolls from at least one, if not both of them, 
because I'm sure doing working on this book was a, a great accomplishment for them was also uh, a great challenge. So, everybody, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll have a new stippling video. But until then, remember, life is stressful. Just take it all one dot at a time.